Hello, boys and girls. Greasy Mojo here. I've drug myself away from playing Horse Testicle Simulator 2 and drawing secret Delta Room porn to bring y'all another video, another installment of my Earth Shattering series, Doodling with Mojo. Doodling very fast today. Today we are continuing my Fusionless Trifusion series with an on model drawing of Carmelita Fox from the Sly Cooper series. Now, if you are new to me, my so called art, and or this video series I've been making, let's do one of those shonen anime recaps to pad out this episode's commentary. I'm making a Trifusion series with the characters Crystal from Star Fox Adventures, Renamon from Digimon Tamers, and obviously Carmelita Fox from the Sly Cooper series. Now, in a Trifusion series, normally you would take three characters and fuse A with B, A with C, and then B with C. To make three new characters the ideal goal not being to draw one character in another character's clothing or one character with another character's color palette or some frankenstein abomination where you fuse design elements from each one together but what you want to do is perfectly fuse the two characters into an entirely new character a new design that could stand on its own then you take those three fusion and fuse them into the tri-fusion. An unholy, over-designed abomination that would make any sane commission artist run for the hills. I'm doing things slightly different as I'm going through each of the characters beforehand and doing a drawing video specifically on them for reasons I have mostly forgotten at this point. This is the last of those videos anyway, so I don't have to care at this point. All you need to know is three anime slash video game fox waifus. Now let's get on to the girl herself, Carmelita Montoya Fox. I don't think I'm going to have much time to talk about my drawing process as I have quite a lot to say about Miss Fox here. Okay, quick rundown for anyone I guess who doesn't know the character. Uh, Carmelita Fox is an Interpol detective, which is sort of based on the actual organization. She's basically an international police officer that chases after super criminals. Most of her efforts, however, apparently go towards chasing Sly and his gang. It's never really explained in, explained why in the games, but there's this comic thingy that goes into her backstory. Um, when she was like a rookie, she was tasked with guarding some famous jewel, and Sly basically made a her look like a fool or something. I don't think he outright stole the thing, but she basically ended up looking like a jackass. And this is a scenario which has been since repeated ad nauseum. So her personality is mostly angry and then more angry, which is fueled by that constant failure to actually make any headway in capturing Sly while he runs rings around her. She's apparently quite good at capturing other criminals, usually because Sly beats them beforehand and she just gets there to clean up the mess. Most of the time she's oblivious to what is actually going on or is just being used or tricked by Sly to achieve his own goals. Really, she's sort of dense or just so insanely focused on Sly that there's that everything else does not matter. And that's evidenced by the fact that even over the course of the four games, she still has no regard for appropriate workplace attire for female law enforcement. I imagine that the majority of the other officers working with her are locked in a constant state of pocket hockey. I know I sure was by working on this. So, she just mindlessly pursues Sly level to level, completely unaware of any ongoing evil mastermind plot that may or may not be occurring. Occasionally she's captured and you have to save her, and then towards the end of the game she usually notices the giant villain mecha that needs to be stopped and she'll help out by shooting at her Lego brick gun. Oblivious and stubborn. She's one of those characters who will not stop to listen to anything that isn't her own opinion or doesn't follow her own ideals. Everything's pretty much black and white to her, and there's no such thing as the honorable thief ideal Sly represents. This is obviously a point of friction between the two, as she and Sly have one of those love-hate relationship thingies. She can't seem to decide if she wants to shoot him in the head or just bend over. Not that she's at fault, Sly seems to delight, delight in playing around with her feelings and never commits to anything himself. So it makes sense that she's angry, frustrated that the one guy 
she likes constantly breaks her ideals or just fucks with her for no reason, for reasons she can't approve of or even comprehend. Sly's an honorable thief. He th- steals from thieves, treats it like a big game. But stealing is just stealing to Carmelita. And I don't think she really grows much over any of the games other than orbiting ever closer to Sly's dick, which is quite easy considering the pervert never wears pants. Events in the third game lead Sly to realize that maybe his thief lifestyle isn't as good as screwing hot ass 24-7, so he just fakes amnesia to sort of avoid their past, and then they go off to live together in Paris. Pretty good deal, to be honest. Then, in the fourth game, Carmelita finally gets a bit of development, as she joins on as a more active member of Sly's gang early on in the game. Though she mostly just spends her time yelling at Sly for jerking her around once again. But as events go on, she sees Sly's motivations firsthand. And why he's been stealing and acting the way he has. And what he's been fighting for. She has a revelation that she needs to just accept Sly for who she is. And she comes to understand that there is good in all of his actions up to that point. But... There's still no fucking closure or happy end for her as at the end of the fourth game, Sly gets flung off into the fucking past or something before Carmelita can talk to him about any of this shit she's like realized. They don't know what happens to him. He could be dead for all they know. So the fourth game closes on her super fucking depressed. Not the best character art for her. But that's not what I care about. What I care about is the design. The boobs, the ass. I feel like when they designed her, their main thought was, let's make her sexy. So sexy that even the densest normie will get it. Her design hits most of the key points for sexy action lady type. Curvy hourglass body, exposed midriff, large breasts with ample cleavage stuffed into a little prog corset thingy. Tight form fitting pants and a fucking dog color that she wears her little badge thing on. Because just remember, she's a policewoman, right? Remember? And she keeps that design for the first three games until the fourth when she finally decides to show more fur and trades out her pants for a stupid looking mini skirt and downgrades the bra corset thingy to just a bra. Now, her design interests me, specifically the just sheer sexual appeal of it. And I'm not just saying that because I'm being a pervert. Because it, it's a conundrum to me. And the question is, why isn't she more popular? A quick search on local internet cesspit E621 reveals that while Crystal has 75 pages in her search results, and Renamon has an impressive 138, Carmelita only has like a pathetic, a paltry 13 pages to her tight ass. Now that's that's quite odd to me. It really is. Because put all these characters, all these girls, they're just, just designs, rather, side by side, and ask me to objectively evaluate and rank them in order of a total porn potential, TPP, I, I would place Carmelita first, and Crystal second, Renamon on third. And I'm not implying that the total porn drawn, TPD, should be reversed as it is now, with Crystal and Renamon miles ahead of Carmelita, no. I would argue that all these characters should have, like, roughly the same level of smut made of them. I mean, Crystal is still wearing either a tribal bikini or a tight latex suit, and Renamon's basically nude and vaguely anthropomorphic, which is fairly easy. But I I would still imagine that Carmelita would beat the other two, just based on her design alone. She has an incredible amount of, like, just fetish fuel just draped all over her. Her sex appeal is, like, way higher than either Crystal or Renamon, just due to sort of the real-world profession that she has. Sort of the thing of, like, Crystal... Has her tribal bikini thing, yes, but that's like a cultural tribe thing, and it's like, okay, that's just what they all wear. And Renamon's vaguely more animalish, though that doesn't really stop people from doing the lewds. 
But Carmen Lita, it feels like more of a choice on her part because she's like a fucking police officer and she still runs around basically as a streetwalker for four games. And in each of those four games, or at least the last three, there's always one sequence that's really, really fetishy. Almost the point of being sort of laughable. In the second game, there's this bit where she's like tied down James Bond style to like a table and she's like being like hypnotized into being mind broken or something. In the fourth game, there's a sequence where she dresses up as a, a belly dancer and you have to do a little mini game with her shaking her ass all around. And then, and then there's the third game, which is good Lord. It's an amount of reaching on the developer's part. So like there's this Australian level in the third game and Sly and his gang go there and there's this, I think it's called the mask of dark earth. This is evil mask that is sentient and it floats around and attaches itself to random enemies and makes them uh, like 10 feet tall and really angry and punchy. And of course it, uh, it finds its way to Carmelita and attaches to her and she becomes 10 feet tall and you know, instantly starts looking around for Sly to make punch of him. So to deal with that, they shoot her with a bunch of sleep darts. But they have the very, very interesting effect of instead of putting her to sleep, they just keep making her bigger. And after shooting her with sleep darts for a while, she ends up about 100 feet tall, stomping around like Godzilla in a silly deep voice. And... I think Bentley the turtle is like, you know, Sly, just, just like go up to her and like crawl up her body real slow and then, then go like whack the mask off of her face and that should solve it. And I'm like playing this game, like squinting my eyes at it. Like who, who thought of this and how hard did they jerk off to it? But anyway, obviously what I'm getting at is Carmelita is, She's mostly thirst. 100% grade A fur bait. Now, now don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not campaigning for an increase in the amount of Carmelita porn being made. That's my, not my agenda. I don't give a shit either way. I'm just trying to fill dead air because I feel compelled to make videos with 30-minute commentary tracks for God knows what reason. Either I wasn't hit enough as a kid or I was hit too much or something like that. So I ask questions and answer them so people can have a podcast thingy they can use for random background noise as they grind for I I items in Warframe or something fucking stupid like that. I just think about all the people actively ignoring me right now, and I know you're doing it. Stop. I have important fucking things to say about Fox Girls. So why? Why does Carmelita Fox have woefully so much less smut than Crystal Renamon? Carmelita is walking sex. So why do we have this discrepancy? It's not like there's been like huge gaps or variation of how long these characters have been around. Digimon Tamers uh, first aired in Japan in 2001 and was later broadcast in the States in 2000. Yeah, the same year, 2001. And Star Fox and the first Sly game were both released in 2002 on the same fucking day. In North America, September 23rd, I think it was. So, time-wise, they're on a pretty level playing field. So, why do we have this discrepancy? Well, obviously, the most obvious answer is that it's, it's just a numbers game. It's the franchises themselves. Both Star Fox and Digimon were well-established franchises at the time, with, I'd imagine, fairly large fan bases. I'm not too sure on the state of Digimon at the time, but it was a toy selling series that had gotten its third anime season in a row, so I'm assuming it was doing well enough to have a good following to make money. As for Star Fox, well, it's fucking Nintendo, so that's obvious. And then we have Sucker Punch, a literally Who studio with their second game here. No span fan base to speak of, really. From the get go, this is fairly ridiculously lopsided. 
Two huge entrenched franchises filled to the brim of confused 20 teens ready to jump on anything remotely sexual. So both Crystal and Renamon get huge initial popularity and recognition boosts, which gives them an immediate broader reach to artists who enjoy sexualizing things for popularity. And then specifically them being Japanese IPs probably also helped quite a bit. And again, on the other end, Carmelita has to rely on additional adopters purchasing the game, then recommending it to others to spread the good word of the sexy fox lady in it. But still, it's 2018. These characters have been around for 16, 17 years. Everyone should be pretty much caught up on the various uh, waifus at this point. So what has still held her back since then? Well, again, it's probably a, a franchise thing, really. Nintendo franchises are insane trucks that can main huge fan bases for years. Same with anime. Tamers is called like the best TV series of the Digimon franchise. But Sly Cooper's never been big or that big in comparison to other things. And I think it's sort of a problem with the PlayStation itself. All those cartoony, sort of kid-friendly IPs like Ratchet and Clank, uh, Jack and Daxter, Sly Cooper, that started around like, I guess, uh, PS2 or PlayStation 1, I guess. They didn't, they really didn't get anything once we went to the PlayStation 3. And I think that was because... While the PlayStation 2 was like, I think it's, I think it either still is or was like the best selling console of all time. The PlayStation 2 was ubiquitous. It was sort of, it was popular because it hit all demographics, sort of like the, the Wii did. But if you look at the PlayStation 2's like uh, best selling games, they're all like, it's almost like completely dominated by like GTA and like, I think God of War is up there too. So it, those are obviously much more mature games than the, the fucking Sly Cooper series. So I guess the way I see it is that when they went on to the PlayStation 3, they were just sort of pushing as like, oh, this is the mature system as opposed to Nintendo's sort of kid-friendly looking thing. So there just wasn't a wasn't a place for these like kid-friendly series like Sly Cooper and Ratchet and Clank. Jack and Dexter, Spyro. You could say that the fan base switched over to Call of Duty and just stopped caring, I guess. So there's no nostalgia, and nostalgia is huge. I'd say a lot of people know about Carmelita, but they just they just don't care. And Carmelita herself and her representation in the game is not really helping either. She's sort of unlikable. She's not really... She doesn't really get anything done in the games. She's she's a bit of a bitch. Uh, definitely not in a Moe way. Uh, Car uh, Crystal, while I said earlier that she doesn't really have anything going f for her personality-wise because she's sort of a nothing character, she doesn't really have anything going against her. So she's literally just riding on her design, basically, which is good enough, to be honest. And then Renamon actually has a sort of uh, good personality, sort of like the, one of those like robotic, I don't understand feelings, but I want to sort of things. And those, I think, have always been, always been fairly popular. But Carmelita's just, she's just angry and then like failure. She's super inconsistent too like throughout the games like her voice artist changes every single game and it just slowly gets more and more towards like the angry latina stereotype which is i personally don't like it and then her in-game models like whatever style they were going for with those graphics ended up aging so so poorly like it, they have like this really bad two, early two thousands licensed game look. Not, not very appealing to me at all. But 
it, it needs some heavy nostalgia to look good. Uh, though I, I suppose at the time, not with everyone's sort of frame of reference they had with like current gen graphics, no one really gave a shit or complained. Though when the fourth game come out, her model in that, good lord, get that shit out of here. It's it's almost like it's frustrating because the rest of the game's models, the rest of the characters look decent. They just look fine, but she's just a train wreck fucking dumpster fire. And I, I don't know who the hell fucking approved that. So if she's unlikable and she's sort of bleh in the games, what's what was even pulling people, what would pull anyone towards her? And I think that's sort of what sells her the best are the little in-game 2D cinematics that they uh, played in between uh, levels as opposed to just having 3D cutscenes. Just little exposition bits. Um, I think probably the most liked ones are the second and third. Probably the most iconic. What makes people, th- what people think of when they think of those. The first game, the in-game cinematics were they're really weird and like geometric and they're strange to look at. I sort of like them in sort of like an artistic way, but I could see how they could be like off-putting to some people. They're just sort of strange. But second and third games, that's where they hit their fucking stride. I'm it's my favorite style for her, and I'm assume it's most everyone else's. They got it's it's very accessible, sort of comic book like, thick lines, very easy to understand what's going on expressive just all around pretty good pretty good art style in the fourth game they still had the cinematics but they were like drastically different which is it makes sense because it was an entirely different studio like eight years later and I, i think a lot of people didn't like those because it was just like it was just it was different it was changed and people they just don't like change and I personally didn't like them. Oh, well, I went into making this video remembering that I didn't like those games. Or those uh, the, fourth, the fourth game's cinematics. But as I was watching through all the cinematics again, I, I realized that they're actually pretty well animated. They're not, they're not that bad. It's just like a different style that I would argue is inferior to the second and third, but it's still, it's still decent, I would say. So, pretty much what I think the fan base for the Sly Games, or the fan base for Carmelita herself, what they gravitate towards is those cinematics. So, I would, in summary, I would say that Carmelita is just an extreme, just boner fuel design that just got placed on the wrong console with the wrong fan base. I don't really think early 2000s horny teens cared about fidelity or personality. They would just burn 30 seconds of cinematics into their minds for later use or, or use then and there if the need was great. But it just, it just wasn't the right audience. She sort of just was forgotten, faded out, but not into just obscurity. Like I said, I think everyone knows Carmelita, but she's in like the the bank, the back ranks, the lower tiers of Furry Wafus. Really, really, she's just eclipsed. She's in the shadow of like Crystal and Renamon. There's not enough st- nostalgia to to bring her forward to get artists drawing her. And if no one is drawing you, Carmelita, no one cares. But I am drawing you, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about me and my drawing for a while. Obviously, with her personality and occupation, which is angry fucking policewoman, having her be like one of my classic fit girls is a no-brainer. No-brainer. I think it works quite well. It's not really a stretch like Crystal and Renamon were. She's, I would say she's ripe to have an unnecessary amount of musculature forced upon her by some thirsty fur fags such as myself. As y'all might guess from my monologue 
on her sexual superiority, I quite like the design. Though I, the one thing I don't like is that uh, in the in the in-game cinematics, her stomach coloration, sort of the yellow orange, stops below her chest, below her little corset thing, and then resumes on her face, which is not something I ever do or really see. And it's actually, I think it's like on the in-game models, it does continue all the way up, and I I didn't actually notice it until I started started this coloring bit here so I just went ahead with what I liked let's see other things I can talk about oh the pose I can say something about that I'm, I'm a big posing guy so let's talk about theory behind that uh, here I think the pose is sort of meh to be honest it's sort of awkward looking I think still works really I I should have done something more action-y, more energetic. Much better for a character, at least. But then that runs me straight in the issue of showing off design versus having a dynamic, interesting pose. And honestly, the former is just easier. Originally, at the beginning of the video, I had just, as y'all saw... I just like started a sketch pass to get some idea of what I wanted to do. Plus, I'd never drawn her before, so uh, good idea to just bust my cherry on a throwaway sketch is something more ideal. But as I usually do, I started really working on a particular pose that I sort of liked, and then I became attached to it. And I was like, okay, this is working. I can show off everything. And then I just started recording it, and I went ahead with it. That's why you didn't really see any of the actual construction of that pose. It's frustrating to me, but it's like my own fault taking the easier path. I think that for the next uh, four videos, I'm going to push for something a little bit better, more interesting, more dynamic. It's harder, yeah, but pushing yourself and then ultimately failing a few times is how you learn. It's just a matter of me actually spending time designing on some sketches and then once the design is actually pinned down then you can have fun posing i guess i could do something with the video structure itself maybe do a bit of some live commentary but i'll decide what to do when i get to it uh one other thing i'll say at the end here uh one of my favorite things about this particular picture is her face or really her expression uh, there's another art dude, uh, uh, pretty big, uh, pretty big. I don't know how exactly to say his name. Miles DF, Miles DF, DF, that fuck. Well, he's fairly well known, so I'm imagining you might know the picture I'm referring to. Uh, he did it, um, well, I don't know if he did it recently or not. In the past two years at least, but it's probably in the past few months anyway. Um, anyway, the picture was... a pin up so it's pretty not safe for work but her expression in it it's sort of ill-fitting for the content of the picture but it's just pure 100 percent i will i will beat your ass stare down there's not so much like anger in it just a, pu a feeling of pure focus seriousness like like it's the expression i'd imagine she'd have when she's finally had it with Sly's bullshit. All the crazy boss mechs and the fucking time travel. Just a, we are done, I am throwing down the gauntlet. We are coming to a decision right here and now. Stop this bullshit, or I'm going to be using this, or I'm not going to be using just a stunt, stunt pistol anymore. Now, I really didn't do the expression quite right as I let a little bit of that Carmelita anger slip in, which muddies what I wanted to convey. The expression is, maybe I'll put it up, it's like a calm seriousness, seriousness like complete control. Really, it sort of speaks to the direction I think that her character arc should have went. To stop giving Sly unlimited passes, stop covering up your feelings with some stereotypical angry latina persona and give sly the ultimatum keep on with this noble thief bullshit and keep jerking me around or give it up and be with me 
keep stealing pointless shit for fun, or sex. Well, she sort of gets Sly making this decision when Sly fakes amnesia at the end of the third game, but even then that's just a trick. It's not her decision. She, she doesn't control that. And when they tackle it in the next game, she handles it like she always does by being extremely pissed off and yelling a bunch and f- refusing to acknowledge or understand or deconstruct the situation as it is. But then eventually, like I said, she sees the good in them. She sort of becomes okay with it, and, but she never has a, any. She never actually has the time to say that before he gets flung fucking somewhere else in time. So at the end of everywhere, so at the end of everything, like we're at the end of this video, she's just really, <laughs> she's just really sad and regretful. Not a good ending for her. So that's so that's why I like this expression. And this backstory I've crafted for it because it presents a scenario that forces closure with her sly problem so she can move past it and be better. Focus on her being who she is, but more complete as she's fully accepted or rejected her black and white worldview by proxy of accepting or rejecting sly and no longer letting him deflect the issue with his playful antics. That's her problem. And when it's resolved, she's no longer an angry bitch, but now is a professional fucking police officer who gets shit, who gets shit done and doesn't let anger control her. And I'm going to have to wrap up here now. All in all, I, I liked how the picture turned out. I liked the, I really do. I really liked the expression how sort of clean the shading was on it. Um, just the overall saturation of the picture was pretty good. I like the red limb, uh, red uh, rim light I put on there. And pose aside, it, it's fine. It's fine. It really is. So uh, that's the end of that. Uh, future plans. We're finally done with the first part. We finally drawn all of them, just their base designs. So I can finally move on to doing the fucking fusions and stop looking like a jackass. Um, probably we'll try to keep on the same schedule and release some released. Um, what was I planning on doing? It's probably crystal plus Renamon. Crystal and Renamon. So I'll do the fusion video for that sometime in December. I may, uh, may have to push it back to, um, January of 2019 just because shit gets in the way but we'll see what happens we'll see if you like the video you can subscribe to the channel for new videos every month you can do some googling and find my various pages on Fur Affinity, DeviantArt, Tumblr and Twitter you can jump on my discord and talk about your fetishes and you can also support me on Patreon I'll put some links up here so you can ignore them, but any bit of support helps. Thanks again, guys. Goodbye, and I'll see y'all later.